Amen, 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 amen. Woo, it's already half past. Go, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about picking up the ability to accept and move forward. I want you this morning to take up the ability to accept certain things in your life and move forward. Amen. There are some things in your life you have to accept. There are some things you don't like, but even as that song said, <laughs> we just accept it and we say thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you about that. I believe the Lord wants to speak to you about some things that they're not great. They're, they're not fair. They're not fun. They're not good in your life, but you're going to have to accept it and move forward. Are you ready this morning? Amen. Father, I pray your grace as we go forward this morning. Hallelujah. Now, we've been walking through Job. We are jumping into chapter 2. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start to wrap up uh, our series on the book of Job. Job has so many things to teach us. We're going to wrap it up in the next couple of weeks. And then as we go uh, before the end of the year, we want to focus the year on thanksgiving and prayer. Amen? Amen. Before we end this year, we want to thank God for all that he's done in 2021. God has been good to us. Amen? Amen. We are breathing. We are strong. God has been good to you. Amen? Amen. You believe that this morning? God has been good. He has been so good in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of famines, in the midst of it all. We want to thank God and we want to take time to pray into 2022. Amen? Amen. I am believing God for more in your life next year. I am believing God for changes in your life next year. I am believing God for revelation and visitations in your life next year. Hallelujah. So as we want to take the time, as we wrap up this series, we're going to go into a season of thanking God and praying for next year. I hope you'll be ready for this. Amen. Amen. Now I'll talk about that a bit later uh, as we continue. Now as we jump back into Job, let us go to chapter 2. Let's go to chapter 2. I'm going to read for you. Hmm. For the sake of time, let's just go from verse 6 to verse 10. What's happened in chapter 2, remember, we've spoken about how there were the conversation in heaven and Satan started to attack Job and he hit this and he hit that and Job worshipped God. Amen? Amen? And then Satan goes back to God and they have another conversation. Please read it again. Uh, the, the story goes uh, from earth to heaven, from earth to heaven, and then it's going to come back to earth. Now in heaven, they have another conversation and, 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 and Satan says, let me strike his body. Let me strike his health and you'll see he's still going to curse you to your face. He's still convinced that this guy is going to curse God. But Job continues to bless God. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. No matter what, we are going to worship God. Hallelujah. Are you with us this morning? No matter what. Shout no matter what. We are going to worship God. Amen. So Job continues. Now Satan comes again and he hits his health. And he hits him hard. And all kinds of things are happening. And I want to read there as we continue on in this story. Go down to verse 6. Are you there? Verse 6. The Lord said to Satan, very well, then he is yours. He is in your hands. But you must spare his life. I want you to notice that God gives the permission. If the enemy does anything in your life, he still has to ask permission from God. Amen. Satan is not a boss. <laughs> amen. You know who's boss? Lord. The Lord is your boss. Amen. Uh, somebody said Bosoki man, and somebody else said Ki Jesu. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is the boss. Even if the enemy, even if he allows something in your life, he allows it. If he allows it before he comes, he has to go to God and ask permission. So if he entered my life, I have to know that God must have allowed something. That's the only way he can get here. The only way he can get into my door. Is if God allowed it. You need to know this. Amen. So the Lord said, okay, ha, he's in your hands, but you must spare his life. So he allows it and he puts the boundary. He says, you can hit this far, but don't go this far. Amen. I thank God for the boundaries Amen. he's put in my life. Amen? Amen. I thank God for the boundaries that he's put in your life. He says, you can hit it this far, but don't cross that line. <laughs> don't go that far. You can touch this, but don't touch that. See, God knows exactly what you can handle. 
He knows how far you can be pushed. So if he's allowing it, <laughs> you know God allowed it, amen? amen? He's allowing it, you know that it's on purpose, amen? amen? So he puts the boundary there. Spare his life. Let's continue. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself, <laughs> scraped himself with it uh, as he sat amongst the ashes. It's like, it's like being uh, there at the city dump. That's really the picture. He's, he's sitting at the place where they throw all the rubbish and he's sitting there and he takes a piece of, of broken pottery and he's, that's all he can do to try to soothe some of the pain that he has. He's got these, uh, these, these pains all over his body. Just picture those, those warts and those sores from the sole of his feet to the top of his head. And the only relief you can get is this piece of pottery just to scratch that he can get a bit of relief. Do you see this picture? Job is in pain as he sat amongst the ashes. Continue. His wife said to him, as if it wasn't hard enough that physically he's facing pain. His loved one. His wife, the mother of the children, comes to him and says, Are you still holding on to your integrity? <laughs> you know the people that will come to you while you're still going through things. Are you, are you still holding on? Are you still believing this God? Oh my goodness. Are you still holding on to integrity? She says, Curse God and die. Even the wife says this to him. Curse God and die. Continue. He replied, Oh Job. You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Somebody say thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's the song we were singing. Amen. Somebody shout thank you. Amen. For the good and for the trouble, shout thank you. Amen. For the ups and for the downs, shout thank you. Amen. I know that it's hard and it's going to be difficult for some of us. Maybe Job's wife is in this room, but I want you to say thank you. Amen. Amen. So shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. I want to talk to you today about the ability to accept and move forward. Are you ready? Amen. Father, help me as I speak. Amen. Amen. So this is the situation Job is facing. He's sick. His, his wife has turned on him. The only person he can have to lean on has turned on him. It's a tough, tough situation. Now, beloved, there, there are many things in our lives uh, that come, and some of them we have to accept them. Amen? Amen. And even as I go into that, I, I'm wondering, how do you handle the things that come in your life? How, how do you manage uh, the different cases that come into your life because there, there's, some, there's some hard things and there's some easy things and as they are coming, you know one of the things that many of us face is anxiety pressure stress stress because there's all these things coming my way and, and your heart has to respond to them differently because, because all of them are on a different level does that make sense? we don't respond to everything the same and to, to illustrate this, let me tell you this thing uh, there was this lady in the, uh, working in a hospital, and she worked in the emergency room. Just picture in the emergency room where somebody comes and they've been stabbed, somebody comes and they have got cancer, somebody comes and they've been in an accident, just the, the ICU, the worst of the things, and, and things are coming the whole day, that's your job, you're dealing with pain, you're dealing with emergency. And somebody asked her, how do you deal with all of these? How do, you, how do you deal with the stress of problems coming at you every day? The whole day, when you get to work, somebody's dying. When you continue your work, somebody's sick. When you, by the end of the day, things have happened. How do you handle the stress? I'm asking you even in that, how do you handle the stress of all the things that are coming in your life? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. How do you handle the stress of the things you face in your life? Amen? Amen? Here's what she said. She said, you know what? We have four categories. On one category, we put them in red. If you are red, it means this is a major situation and it's life-threatening. We have to operate immediately. If it's yellow, it means it's important 
but it's not life threatening. It's a big thing, but it's not life threatening. You're not going to die. If it's green, she said, it's a minor thing. It's, a, it's painful, but it's a small thing. Does that make sense? It's, it's tough, it's uncomfortable, but it's small. And then they had a section for dark blue where somebody has died and we have to move on. Because if we don't move on, we can't continue working. We can't continue operating on the person that's still alive. Somebody has died and we have to move forward. Four categories. One red, one yellow, one green, one dark blue. I want to suggest to you for the things that you're facing to place them in those categories. One red, it's a major thing and it's life threatening. Some of the things you face, they're major and they're life threatening. But, but here's the problem with us. Not everything is red. Amen. Some of us live as if everything is life threatening. Everything is such a big problem. You miss the taxi, red. You know, you, you, you lost something, red. You, like, it's just, your life is so hard. But not everything is red. You're not going to die. Hallelujah. There are some things that if they hit you, oh my goodness, we need to move quickly. But not everything is red. And if you are living in this anxious place, you're living like everything is such a problem. And you're going to be stressed. And you're going to burn out. Red, that's right. Red thing. Then there are things that are yellow. They are important. But even if you lose them, you're not going to die. Students, are there any students in the house today? Amen? Amen. Let me say something to the students, for instance. Even the guys who are online. If you fail your exam, oh, that's going to be rough. That's going to be so difficult. If you failed your exam, it's important. Please don't fail your exam. Amen. Amen. May there be no failures in every nation, Brother David. Amen. May our students excel and get distinctions every year. Amen. Amen. But if it happened that you failed your exam, can I tell you something? You're not going to (laughs) die. Hallelujah. Oh, please hear me, church. You're not going to, even if you fail and you have to do another year or another two years, you're not going to die. It's not over. So don't get into that failure and feel like my life is over. I know people who've committed suicide because you failed an exam. But you still have life. (laughs) You still have a chance. You still have God on your side. Does this make sense, church? You will, it's important, but it's not life-threatening. Amen? Oh, I hope you receive that today. Amen? Amen. So please, if, you, if there are things in your life that fit in the yellow category, then there are things in your life that fit in the green category. It's painful, it's tough, but it's a small thing. The, the friend talked about you, they, they told your secrets. You told them, don't tell anybody. Now they told you, yeah, it's painful. You can't trust them. But it's a small thing. Am I making sense today? There are different categories that you need to put these things. And then there's the dark blue. It was tough. You did your best. But it died. And you have to accept it and move forward. And if you don't accept it, you are going to be stuck at the graveyard of your disappointment. Amen? There are some things that are important. They're really, they, like they, they mean a lot. Job has lost his children, but he has to accept it and move forward. Amen? Now, in that category, ha, before I even go to my text for today, you know, there's different kinds of things that we need to accept. Some, some of the things that we need to accept are these big things. Somebody has died. Uh, you, you have lost your job. Uh, you have all, you have to accept it and move forward. But then there's these other categories of things that you have to accept that are things like accepting yourself. You, you have to accept how you look. <laughs> You're not going to change that. You know, for instance, for, for me, I am a young, black, uh, bald-headed young man. Amen. I have to accept it. Sometimes even the kids, they come and they say, Pastor, why don't you put, you know, 
those plants in your like <laughs> really <laughs> no 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 I accept it Amen. that's who I am maybe the Lord gave it to me just so I can preach to you about Amen. it maybe he allowed it just so I have something funny to let you know but, but sometimes you have to accept this is my body this is who I am this is how I'm shaped if God wanted you to look any different he would have made you different Amen. you have to go in that mirror and say I accept myself if you don't accept yourself, you're going to be living in a prison. Amen? Amen. You have to accept it. Amen. Some of those things you have to accept is like, even in relationships, even in marriage. Some of us in our marriage, <laughs> we can end up trying to change something about the spouse. And we're pushing and we're pushing, but sometimes you have to accept that that's the man that you married. And that's the woman that you married. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Some of those things can change, but some of those things, that's who God made them to be. And you trying to change them is actually you working against how God designed them. Amen. So accept it. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to be frustrated trying to push. Today you need to say, you know what? I'm going to accept it. Amen. 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 Some of us, we have to accept the mistakes you made. You made the mistakes. It's done. I, you, it was a problem. You shouldn't have done it. But it's over. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Are you going to cry forever? Are we going to talk about this thing every year, every year? You know, when in 20 this day, in 2002, I did this. It's done. Accept it and move forward. Hallelujah. Accept it and move forward. Hallelujah. Accept it and move forward. I'll give you one more. Some of us, you expected your life to be somewhere by now. And you're not there. You thought you would be millionaire by 25. And you realize, it's not that easy. <laughs> the things they told you on Facebook, they don't just happen. <laughs> Amen. You thought your life would be at this place and you're frustrated. You're going to have to accept this is where I am. This is the real. Some of us, we, we thought, oh, I was going to do this. I was going to be this pastor. I was going to do this thing. I thought I'd be here by 30, 40, 50. And you're not where you expected to be. Accept it. Accept the reality. Because if you don't accept it, you won't know how to move forward from here. Amen. You can't move forward from a dream. It's not here. You can't move forward from a fantasy. You can only move forward from where you are. Amen. This is your reality. Amen. Somebody say, accept it. Amen? Amen. Oh, shout it loud. Accept it. Amen. So... <laughs> Job is going to teach us how to accept and move forward. Shall we go in this word? Amen. Amen. Now let's go in there. Hallelujah. Father, may you help us to accept the things that are even difficult. Now let's go down to verse 9. Looking at the time, I don't know if I'll have time to finish this message. We might have to continue next week. I'm accepting it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Now, Job's wife, she says, curse God. Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Now, before we start to judge her, I mean, how can a wife say this? Brother Patrick, can you imagine your wife saying, I used to curse God and die. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? You're already suffering, and your woman comes to you, speaks to you, curse God and die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know <laughs> how I would survive. That's a shot, amen. Oh, be careful what you say, amen. amen. She says this, but before we judge her, I want you to recognize one, she's also grieving. She also lost her 10 kids. She's, she's also in pain. And sometimes when you're grieving, you, you say things that you shouldn't say. Sometimes when you're in pain, you say things that you're going to regret later. So before we judge her, understand she's also in pain. Amen? Number two, before you judge her, you also have to understand that she's tired. Who do you think is taking care of Job? It's probably the wife. 
Amen? Amen. It's one thing to take care of somebody for two weeks. It's another thing to take care of somebody for a long time. I don't know if you've ever had somebody sick in your family, maybe a grandmother. When you start, it's okay. When you're taking care of the person and they're not getting well, oh, you get tired. And then you're also guilty because you know they, they don't want to be sick, but you're the only one there to take care of them. He doesn't have another wife. <laughs> She's tired. Do you see that? She's tired. And she says this. Sometimes when we're tired, we say things. I wish we say. Thirdly, this woman, she's also under attack. The enemy has attacked her family. The enemy has attacked her house. The enemy is attacking the husband. Do you think the enemy is not attacking her? The enemy is attacking her. Look what she says. She said, curse God and die. Where did we hear that before? Who said that? <laughs> Who said that in chapter 1? The devil. The devil said, this guy, if you hit him, he's going to curse you to your face. Chapter 2, who says that? Again, he goes to God. If you hit him, he's going to curse you to your face. Now she's saying the exact thing that the enemy was saying. I'm telling you, there is a spirit behind what she's saying. That there is somebody speaking in the midst of what she's saying. I'm telling you when you're tired, please don't let the devil use you. Amen? Don't, don't, don't say things. She's echoing Satan. She's not echoing God. You know what God is saying? He's going to make it. God is saying he's going to be strong. God is saying he's going to handle it. God is saying that's my son. Do you know what the devil is saying? The devil is trying to push it. Just curse God. Curse God. Curse God and die. Remember? That's, that's the enemy trying to push it. What's the test? That's the enemy trying to push Job over the edge that he curses God. And in her weakness, she has allowed the enemy to say something through her. Tell your neighbor, don't let the devil use you. In fact, here's what I want to say to you. In your moment of weakness, don't step into foolishness. Amen? Amen. In your moment of weakness, don't step into foolishness. When it's hard and you're tired and you're grieving and things are attacking you, don't step into foolishness. Don't say things you're going to regret. Don't break things you're going to have to repair tomorrow. Don't go do things that are not going to be good for you. In your moment of weakness, don't step into foolishness. Don't be a fool, child of God. Don't be, I wish I could speak to Job's wife. That I know you're weak and I know, I know it's hard and I know it's not fair and I know it's not right. It's not good that you lost your children and it's not, it's not fair. Even some of you are in the room, it's not fair what you're going through. But in your moment of weakness, don't step in to foolishness. Amen. 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 Don't make a dumb move. Don't go cheat on your wife or cheat on your husband. Because you're dealing with something. Don't go cheat on the exam and find some because you're dealing with something. No, 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 no. This is a moment to, to stand. Hallelujah. This is a moment to believe God. Hallelujah. In that moment of weakness, what do we do? This is the time to hold on to our God. Amen. Amen? Amen. This is the time to stick to him. So she's being attacked and she speaks. Like a foolish woman. So let's continue. Now, why is what she's saying foolish? Why is this foolish? He says to her, you're speaking like a foolish woman. He's not insulting her. He's describing what's going on. He's saying, you're speaking like, like a fool. He's, 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 saying, he's saying, this is not like you. Job didn't marry a foolish woman. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Job didn't marry a foolish woman. He's saying, but what's going on? Now you're speaking like, like a foolish woman. Amen? So some of you, you're out of character. You're, 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 you're doing things now. You're speaking like a... But that's not you. Amen? Sometimes when it's hard, you start doing things that are not you. So he says, you're speaking 
like a foolish woman. Why is it foolish? One, it's foolish. Look what he says. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? One, it's, it's foolish to believe that God will never allow trouble in your life. Amen. That's foolish. If you are here and you believe that, that's foolish. If you are here and you think that God will never allow hard things, hard things, that is a foolish idea. Amen. 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 It is foolish to believe that God will never allow hard things in your life. That's why he said, shall we accept good and not trouble? Because God does allow some trouble in our lives. If you've ever read your Bible, you're going to see David in trouble. You're going to see Joseph in trouble. You're going to see Noah in trouble. You're going to see Jeremiah in trouble. You're going to see Ezekiel in trouble. You're going to see Ezra in trouble. You're going to see Nehemiah in trouble. You're going to see Jesus in trouble. You're going to see Peter in trouble. You're going to see Paul in trouble. You're going to see all these things in trouble. But for you, God's not going to bring any trouble. It's foolish. <laughs> it's foolish, amen? It, it, she's thinking that God will only bring good things. And every time God brings trouble, you know why he brings it? He brings it on purpose. Yeah, he brings it either he's going to deal with something in you. Yeah. He's using it to deal with something that's in you. He, it's showing you who you are. You thought you were strong. Now the situation is showing you, eh? Hey, there's something we need to deal with here. He's operating. Or he's developing you. Amen. You didn't do anything wrong. Job didn't do anything wrong. But he's, sometimes he uses a problem to make you stronger. To build your muscles. To, to prepare you for the king that you're going to be. Amen? Amen? To prepare you for where you are going to reign. Because you can't be a child when you get to that place. Amen? Amen. So he's developing your muscles to handle conflict. Some of it is training for reigning. That's all it is. He uses troubles <laughs> to build your muscles. Amen. Amen. If, if the camera wasn't stopping right there, I'd do just some push-ups for you just to let you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How do you build muscle? Strain. <laughs> you don't build muscle sitting there. If you build muscle sitting there, every time you got on a taxi, muscles would grow. Right now, muscles would be growing. The only time you build muscle is through strain. You push. If God allows trouble, Either he's dealing with something or he's developing you. Or sometimes when he allows trouble, it's not even about you. It's about your testimony. Amen. It's about somebody else who's going to benefit from your story. Yeah. This story of Job is more than 4,000 years old. And we are still benefiting from it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's more than, what are you going to do today that's going to last 4,000 years? 4,000 years. We're going to forget Mandela. We're going to forget Gandhi. We're going to forget all 4,000 years. We don't know anybody who lived 4,000 years, but we know Job. Amen. <laughs> How do we know Job? God allowed a painful thing. It was difficult. Yeah. But there was a purpose so that his life could benefit you. Amen. His life could do something for me and for you. Some of the things you're going for, it's not even about you. It's about your story that's going to help somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. It's about somebody that's going to learn from what you're facing in your marriage, what you're facing in your business, what you've, God allows you to get into something that when somebody looks at your life, they say, wow, okay, I can do it too. Amen? Amen? So God allows trouble for these kinds of reasons. It's foolish to believe that God will not allow trouble in your life. Secondly, it's foolish to leave God when he allows trouble in your life. Yeah. She says, curse God and die. Curse God, all that means is turn away, reject, leave him. Tell your neighbor it's foolish to leave foolish if God allows trouble. That's what people do. When it gets hard, and they say, what's the point? <laughs> Can you see that's the temptation? Curse God and die. What's the point? If you leave, you have stepped into foolishness. Go and go where? There is no other God but Jehovah. <laughs> go where? <laughs> go and do what? Amen? Amen? It's foolish to leave if God allows. What you should do is stand with God. 
What you should do is stick with him. What you should do is dig deep to find the purpose. There's a purpose. If God allowed anything, like I told you, he, the devil had to get permission. And the only reason he got permission is because God has a purpose. If he allows it, he knows you can handle it. And he's going to do something in your life. Amen? Amen. So that's two things. As I start to wrap up, because I'm already over my time, it's foolish to believe that God will not allow trouble in your life. It's foolish to leave if God allows trouble in your life. But you know what's wise? It's wise to accept both good and trouble Amen. from God. Amen. This is what Job does. He accepts it from God. Now let me do this very quickly. Job, look, look at Job. Job recognizes that he doesn't say this thing is from the devil. He doesn't say this thing is from people. He doesn't recognize the devil or whatever. He recognizes that this is coming from God. He recognizes God in the situation. There is a strength in seeing God in the situation. He recognizes that if this is coming in my life, God must have allowed it. He says, this is trouble coming from God. This is a hard message. I would need more time to really do it justice. But he's, he's seeing that, no, 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 it's not the devil that's in control because he's not in control. God must have allowed it. Some of you, your devil is too big. Some of you, you treat the devil like, like he has power over God. Like he can just come in and do anything in your life at any time. Let me remind you, greater is he that is living in you than him that is in the world. Amen? Let me remind you that your God is much greater than that devil. Amen? Let me remind you that that guy has to ask permission before he touches a child of God. Amen? Amen? So Job says, this is trouble from God. You know what he's saying? He's saying, if God allowed it, I can accept it. Amen. Can I tell you that? If God allowed it, yeah. you can accept it. Amen. If it's not from God, kick that thing out. Amen. <laughs> yes. But if you've been trying to kick it and trying to change it and it's not changing and God is allowing it, you can accept it. Amen. Take it. Oh, tell your neighbor, just take it. Amen. Tell them again, take it. Amen. I know they don't want to take it, but tell them, take yeah. it. Amen. Amen? <laughs> Accept it and move forward. I've got over time, but just give me three minutes and I'll be done. Now, the biggest challenge for us accepting, you know what it is? One, we don't want it. But because you're Christians, you know what it is? <laughs> the biggest challenge to accept it is we are people of faith. Some of you are saying, but Pastor, how can you tell me to accept it when, when God can change it? Ah, oh, Pastor. How can you tell me to accept this thing when God, I'm not going to accept it. Me, I'm not going to tolerate it. God is going to change it. God, as if you can just tell God, God, do this thing. Amen? <laughs> so that's a real thing. We are people of faith. We believe God can change things. And sometimes that's the biggest challenge. Look, Job here, he's lost his kids. They've died. Does God raise the dead? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Amen. I love the boldness. There was like one bold person in the room. Everybody else was still wondering. Can, can I take her? Let me repeat what she said. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. God raises the dead. Does God raise the dead all the time? No. She didn't give me the same boldness, but that's okay. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He does raise the dead, but he doesn't do it all the time. He does change your situation. He doesn't do it all the time. He does heal the sick. Oh, yes, he does. But he doesn't do it. Oh, what do you do if he chooses not to do in your life? Accept. Hallelujah. Because it's still God. Oh, this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. Grace me, Father. Let me end off with this story. Uh, Pastor Sam, I adopt born. He, he leads our church in, um, in Nigeria in Lagos, Nigeria. He leads about 30 churches in the area. Uh, the church in Nigeria is called uh, Realm of Glory. It's an awesome, powerful church. Amen? Amen. Hope you get to meet him. Uh, Pastor Eric was here on Friday. He blessed us so much. Hey, when you guys missed that, if you are not there, Pastor Eric is one of Pastor Sam's sons. It's an amazing thing. Anyway, so, so Pastor Sam, when they started, they really believed faith for miracle, faith for this, name it and claim it, da -da 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 -da, all those kind of things, right? And so a big faith church. One day, 
one of his leaders, one of the elders in the church, uh, lost one of their children. Twin daughters, uh, they had a car accident, and one of the children died. Beautiful young girl, passed away. Now, you know Nigerians can be very aggressive. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can be very aggressive in the Nigerian Christians can be aggressive in their faith. We love them. Amen. Yeah. So when the news came to the mother, said, no, your child is dead. She said, ah, uh -uh. my child is not dead. My child is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Then the people next to her said, yeah, say it again. She said, yeah, my child is not dead. She's alive. They said, say it again. Amen. To the point that she said, even if my child is dead, God is going to raise him from the dead. Yeah. That's where the faith was. They said, yeah, say it again, say it again. The whole group, now they're praying, praying. They went to the church, they start praying. Strong prayers. Yeah, even if he's dead, God is going to raise him again. Amen? Amen? And now, guess what the pastor's job is going to be? The pastor's job is going to be to go and raise that child. From the dead. <laughs> <laughs> they called the pastor and said, this has happened. The church is praying, praying. Come and raise this child from the dead. Pastor here is like, yay! Okay. <laughs> you know that's going to make a pastor pray. He's in the car, he's praying. He comes in, he sees the praying, 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 praying. Pray. So he calls uh, one of his brothers in the city where, where the child passed away. It's probably like from now here to Cape Town. And the brother tells him, hey man, this, the child is not only dead, but uh, the, the body is disfigured. So she, she's in a bad state. You know. He hears that and he's like, okay, what am I going to tell these people? Ah, he starts praying, he's praying, he's praying, he's praying. To hear God, what are you saying? What are you saying? Because he, if he's going to pray, he wants to hear God because faith comes by hearing. Amen? Amen. He wants to hear God, if you're going to raise it, I want to hear. What are you saying? God says to him this as he's praying. He says, you guys, you've been living on a lower level of faith. You're using your faith to change things. You're using your faith to bring miracles. Yes, that's good, but that's one level. I've got another level of faith for you. He says, the level of faith I want you to go to is, is the level where you embrace my will, even if it's Hallelujah. Amen. He said, you've got faith. I can see you've been working your faith to change, 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 change. Move the mountain, cast it in, and you're doing it, and it's good. But there's another level where you embrace my will. Even if it's tough. Amen. He said, Jesus, oh. use faith, cast out, did, 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 walked on water, miracles. Oh, Jesus. But then in Gethsemane, he said, Lord, I don't want to do this. If it be your will, take this cup of suffering from me. Oh. But God, not my will. Hey. Your will be done. Oh. And he used his faith to embrace the will of God, even if it was difficult. And so he walks to the church and he says, Mama, I, I bless you. You're great. You're, I love your faith. But you know what God said? God said, your daughter is dead and she's gone to be with God. And God says, we've been living on a lower level of faith. We've been doing good. But God wants to take us higher now. He wants to take us to a place where we embrace the will of God, even if it's tough. That mama said, Hallelujah. I accept it. And she prayed to God. Amen. Can somebody here say, Hallelujah. I accept it and I praise the Lord. Amen. That's my message for you. Accept it. Hallelujah. Let us stand up and praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. I accept it. I accept it. Amen. Amen. You've been using your faith to bring the miracle. And that's good. But you also have, it takes faith to embrace the will of God, even when it's tough. That's what Job is doing here. He says, God's in charge. I accept, I still believe you and I accept it from you, God. I trust you in the middle of this situation. Hallelujah. I want you to praise God and say, God, in fact, let's do these three prayers and we'll be done. There is a prayer called the serenity prayer. Amen. Amen. It says, God, give me the peace, the serenity, to accept the things I cannot change. Amen. Two, it says, give me the courage to change things that I need to change. And also give me the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. We're going to pray this. Prayer. First of all, I want you to say, God, give me the peace to accept the things that I cannot change. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, give me the peace. Give me the peace. Give me the peace. 
<laughs> Lord, I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. Lord, give me the peace. Give me the peace to accept the things that I cannot change. To accept the things that are not going to change. That if it's your will, if it's your will, I accept it today, dear God. If it's your will, I accept it today, dear God. If it's your will, I accept it. If it's your will, I accept it. If it's your will, I accept it. I know it's hard and it's not fair. And I wish it wasn't me. And why did I have to go through this? But if it's your will, my God, I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. Father, I pray. Give me the grace right now. Give me the grace right now. Give me the grace right now to accept it, dear God, in the name of Jesus. To accept it, dear God, in the name of Jesus. If it be your will. If it be your will. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, my God, but your will be done. I accept it, Father. I accept who I am. I accept where I am. I accept what's going on. I accept it, dear God. I know it's hard, but I will drink this cup of suffering. I know it's difficult, but I drink it, dear God. I take it right now. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name, accept it. You're not going to move forward if you don't accept it. You're not going to move forward if you don't accept it. Accept it. You made the mistake. Accept it. You are who you are. Accept it so you can move forward, church. God, if it's your will, I accept it. If it's not your will, change it. But if it's your will, I accept it. If it's not you, Father, change it. But if it's you, God. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus, I accept it today, dear God. Ah. In heaven, let him. Ah, thank you, Lord. 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 Father, we accept it this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. When you get home today, I want you to pray this small. I want you to pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. God, if you can, not even if you can, if it be your will, take this cup of suffering from me. Take it. I don't want it. If it be your will, God, not my will, your will, I accept it. If you have allowed it, I will accept it. It won't be forever. Hear me. It won't be forever. Jesus died. Three days later, he rose again. Amen. 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 Perhaps God is just waiting for you to accept it. So once you accept it, in some time, he can raise you up. Hallelujah. Raise your hands as we close up. Father, ah, Lord. Lord, this message is too big, dear God. It's bigger than this moment. Father, I pray so deeply. Help our people tonight. Pray and say, God, I want your will, not my will, your will. If it's your will, I accept it. If it's not your will, change it, my God. Remove it, my God. But if it's your will, help me accept it and move forward. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everybody say, come on, somebody shout. Come on, somebody bless your Lord. for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. If you're visiting us for the first time, please come to the room there. We'd love to speak to you just for five minutes. Otherwise, go well. God bless. See you on Friday. See you on Saturday. See you on Sunday. Amen.